Hello everyone, want to jump on here and make a video describing this log4j vulnerability that was discovered um, a few days ago, so December 9th, so Thursday. Just kind of want to put in the context of MuleSoft, what it is, um, how MuleSoft applications are affected, and what we can do to protect ourselves. So let's dive right in. Across the internet, there's a lot of blogs and posts people are describing it. They're calling it the log4j RCE, remote code execution bug, or sometimes they call it zero day. And you can get more into the details online. What it is, is a remote person or attacker can execute remote code on your servers. And this is through a vulnerability in the log4j library. So MuleSoft by default uses log4j in its logging. So if you ever been in your application, you can see there's a log4j configuration file in here. If you ever did a Maven on your artifact after you build it, you'll see that the log4j library is included. The vulnerability is saying that um, it affects log4j2 versions between pretty much the start of log4j2 and 2.14. This pretty much affects every every runtime. Um, you shouldn't just go by the fact that um, you're in this version. You might not think that you're affected. You should at least try test it out yourself. And I'll show you how to do this later in the video. You can always do like a, a Maven dependency lookup on your artifact. Also in the log, sometimes you can search for log4j and you'll see a message on the startup with the version number. But either way, please test it out to make sure that you are affected. So in a nutshell, trying to explain it, and I don't want to get into too much detail into it. You can, there's tons of articles that do a better job than I will. But essentially, log4j has this lookup package. So essentially, what you could do in your log4j is if you start, um, it's like a keyword. Yeah, for example, if you do a dollar sign, open, open bracket, close bracket, you can enter in here, you can enter in here a lookup. So there's a whole bunch of different lookups. Let's see if this link has it. Yeah, so there's so many looks like CTX lookup. And you put it in like a prefix, prefix, which is kind of like the name of the lookup. And then you have kind of like your execution or the data it needs to execute it. So there's a whole bunch of different lookups. Um, so you can put in your code like lookup event. You may have used it before where you can look up like a Java or system API. But the one that people are really using is a JDNI. So there was a, a lookup, JDNI lookup, and then you can pass in um, the lookup, the URL of the, like an LDAP. And I'll explain more about it later, but in step one, what attackers are doing are using an, an LDAP execution in the JDNI lookup plugin of log4j. So if you were to take this string, which is saying, hey, make a call out to this LDAP server and put it in your log4j, say on the, um, put it on a file pattern. Whenever a log comes through here to be printed out, it'll run the execution and make a call out to the LDAP server, which is fine if you want to do that. But what the exploit is saying is that by default is it doesn't have to be in your configuration. If you, can get the application to write out the log file with this string in it, then it will also execute. So online, one of the common examples they're saying is if you have like a form, like you're signing up for something and it says, um, what is your name? And you put your name as a JDNI lookup. If somewhere in the application, this is gets logged, it'll execute. And that essentially is the definition of a remote code execution. So someone remotely, like the user of your application or the user of your API, can remotely run the server code when it's not intended to be. The first step everyone should do is just do a search on your web servers to see if anybody has tried to attack you. And this could easily be done just by doing a JNDI search on your server logs. So if your logs are in Cloud Hub, you can just go JDNI search. Um, of course, you got to kind of do every app. So this is me testing it. If you're using the logs, log management or any point monitoring, 
you can kind of search quickly across all applications and across all environments. So don't actually just assume that's production. Check, make sure you check all environments. If you are using any point monitoring, the search criteria is a little different. Just do like a star JDNI. Um, doesn't quite work in here, but it'll work um, work on any point monitoring when you're searching across all applications and environments. So let me show you what a real attacker request looks like. So this was pulled off of a development environment for an API, and you'll see here that we logged the HTTP listener as a debug level, wire logging was turned on, and it captured this request coming in. So it logged, you can see here that someone did a JDNI LDAPs to this URL, leakix.net. I did a Google search on it. It seems like they're just probing people's sites for this vulnerability. I'm not sure if they're going to be malicious or not. But you'll see that they passed in that LDAP call in the GET request. They also passed it in. You'll see here that there's a um, question mark dollar sign something equals something. So they also passed it in as a query parameter. And then as a user agent header field, they also passed it in. And they passed it in in some more headers. Control a cookie, cache control, um, also xleaks. I guess that's their own custom one that they might be searching for. So if you go to leakix.net, uh, leak, leakix.net. Yeah, I'm not sure who these people are, but it looks like they're they're monitoring across the web, I guess, for this leak. Maybe they're one of these um, people trying to help out if they discover leaks on people's sites. Not sure, but this is really what happened. So you can see here that they're trying to see if your application prints out this anywhere because when it shows up in the logs, it's going to get executed. So in our case, we had wire debugging turned on, so it printed out every example of it. So if you've seen this in the log, what someone's doing is testing your systems to see if you're vulnerable. So if you are vulnerable, they'll have this LDAP server, which the attacker owns, will get a callback to it. And that's when they know that somewhere the log was printed out and then it executed. And then if they get a message from your IP address, they'll know that you're vulnerable. And then it's not really clear about what they can do afterwards to exploit this maliciously. Online, they're talking about they can make potentially try other JNDI lookups. Some people are saying they were successful on certain servers. I've heard people say that you can chain these together Instead of saying slash B, you can say slash environment variable. Another uh, log4j lookup, you might be able to get people's system properties. So I'm not quite sure where it leads from here. Online is saying people are still probing. So it's probably best to fix this quickly um, before they actually figure out how to maliciously get information from your servers. So the next step you should take is see if you're vulnerable. And there's been some really great online tools that can help you figure this out. One of them is called Huntress. So what they do is they'll set up an LDAP server at this endpoint. And then if they get any requests from your site, they log it. So if I'm able to get the MuleSoft application to log this string and it executes, the LDAP server here, you'll see it will show up with my IP address and the time that it received it. Let me show you how this test works. So I created an application. Of course, this would be your live API. It's an HTTP listener, and I only have one API, which is a post on customers. In my log4j, I've printed out the debug logging, so we should get the full request when the API gets triggered. So I'm gonna call this API through Postman, and I need it to print out this string. So I've set up a request, my localhost slash customers, and I'm gonna put it in two headers. I'm gonna put it in my post body. Um, I could also do a UL parameter, maybe I'll, I'll show that for later. And then if I hit send, I actually went through successful because there was nothing there. And if I go to my logs, you'll see that it's actually printed out the payload on the way back. And this is the request, this is the full request. So you can see here, it actually even printed out uh, headers. So now what I'll do is I'll go to the Huntress, hit refresh, and you'll see that the LDAP call was, was executed once it printed out to my logs. So this is how you can tell that you're vulnerable.
First thing I thought of trying to solve this quickly is what if we turned off the wire debugging? Comment that out, restart the server. And I'll try it again. So in this case, you can see only our log and our flow got printed out and it didn't log any payloads. So I thought it was safe. But what I noticed about that real hackers request is that they didn't even know the endpoint. They're trying to get on our route. So when I started playing around with the request, I noticed that, for example, if you give the wrong API, like you just make one up that doesn't exist, and we add the URL parameter, send it through, we get an error, of course, because uh, these aren't encoded properly. But what MuleSoft is doing in the error message, the default error message, like a warning, what they're doing is they're printing out that the, the URI is malformed. But in the error message, they're actually printing out it. And when I refresh here, you'll see that we got more messages in here. So at 56. So it's still printing it out. So even if you have API Manager set up installed requiring a client ID and secret, like a basic authentication, it's the request still makes it into your server. So if you have wiring turned on or you have some sort of custom error message, you still potentially could print out a lookup. So this was the test application I did just to kind of show it. So if I took this application and deployed it to simulate what you have at your organization already running APIs, you can just do a, a straight Postman call with the JDNI lookup for Huntress and see if that works. So in this case, I take my app URL, put it into Postman and hit send. You'll see 104, 104 came out the error and it printed this out. But when I go to Huntress, you'll notice that I don't get an update. So I'm not vulnerable. And this is only because MuleSoft seems to have patched this overnight. So this was triggering it on Saturday. It's Sunday now. So MuleSoft did something in the background. So I don't think it's an issue anymore for your Cloud Hub workers. Even the recommendation resolve is to turn off that triggering in log4j and there's a configuration. Um, it's, it's in all, you'll find it online. So essentially what you can do is pass an argument to log4j or to your virtual machine. And in this case, that property is called format message no lookup. And what this will do is tell the application that Hey, if we notice that dollar sign open sign in our logs that's printed out, log4j don't execute it. And this is where the bug came up. That execution was set to false by default up until these latest versions. So the default was to execute these log4j lookups. So I tried to see if I could reproduce it by instead of putting a true, set it back to false to enable them again. But it looks like Runtime Manager or MuleSoft's not even allowing me to do that. So it seems to be patched. However, if you are running your standalone version or some sort of maybe even runtime fabric, I'm not sure if this will affect you or not. So definitely try it out. Don't take my word for it. So this is just a VM parameter. There's many different ways you can set this. You can pass it as a property in Cloud Hub if you're using the control plane. You can add it directly inside your log4j files and bundle up in all your applications and redeploy them or you can pass it as a VM to the server when it starts up. So I'm going to show you kind of that last option um, just locally though. Stop the server and if we pass it as a VM argument right in here and now run it. Send the warning message printed out my URI. Now let's see if it executed. It is 109. Refresh, no, still on 56. So the log4j lookup is still being printed out to my logs. It's just not triggering because we've set that flag. And that pretty much sums up the issue. So to summarize the action plan, first check to see if anybody's 
attempted to attack your systems through the log search and then run some tests yourself on one of your applications, whether even if it's in Cloud Hub again, just make sure um, if it's runtime fabric or on on-prem, especially try it. And if you do find yourself vulnerable, close it up by passing in these parameters, this format message, no lookup parameters. Eventually, as MuleSoft updates their engine in runtime, we will be using the latest log4j, but until that happens, we gotta continue to pass these flags in. Hope that was a good MuleSoft related explanation. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. We'll see you next time. Peace. Mm -hmm.